Events bring us together, inspire us, and provide us with lasting memories. But trying to run an event agency while creating these special moments can be difficult, demanding, and sometimes even dreadful, especially if you're trying to do it on your own. So the question is, how do we create wow factors for our attendees while delivering top-notch client events, all while running a profitable business? These are the questions, and I'm here to give you the answers. I'm Chrissy Thompson, and welcome to the Event Agency Secrets Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Event Agency Secrets Podcast. Today on the show, we have one of my favorites, Carol Lyons. Um, she's the founder and creative director at Roar Events. Carol and I know each other. Hi, Carol. Hi. Carol and I have known each other for many moons. Um, I used to be her client when I worked in-house before starting Dynamo. So Carol's been a great mentor to me over the years and just become a really great friend as well. So really excited to have you on the show, Carol. Thank you for having me. This is super fun. Absolutely. Um, so for those of our listeners who aren't familiar with you and Roar Events, let's just give them a little background. Tell us about yourself and kind of how you got started in the industry. So I have been planning and producing events um, officially for 28 years, but I actually started in high school. Um, my mom was an event planner. That's actually how my mom and dad met. Um, she was the manager of one of his events that he was doing. Um, so it's kind of been in my blood. Totally. And yeah, I started in I started in publishing when the internet was just being born. Imagine contracts coming over via fax that aren't like the paper. It's like that thermal paper, making <laughs> sure that it cuts. Yeah, good times. No email, um, you know, no cell phones, none of that. So really started in um, way back in the day. And just been growing and having fun, really. Yes, yeah. that is that's got to be such a crazy evolution over the years. From how yeah, we started started planning events and how you plan events today. It probably looks very, I mean, definitely very different, but almost not. Yeah. I mean, the foundations are still there, but definitely the logistics of how it happens is totally different. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I am still like a paper person. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I like tech, obviously. Um, but I, I mean, I have a I have like a, you know, my calendar in on the computer, but I like to have the paper. You know, I think we were talking about this, like, it's like, we try to get like, oh, let's put everything on the iPad, all of the stuff. But there's something about that binder that just, mm -hmm. you can just flip through and look and get it like super quick. Um, yes, yeah, I, I started, I started Roar 17 or going on 17 years now. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey. It's been a magical journey. Um, <laughs> and but super fun focus. What's your focus right now? And at Roar focus is, so it's interesting. I, this may sound just like, I don't even know, like the right words, but I focus on things that light me up, that get me excited. I absolutely love hotels. Like I get giddy over them. So I do site selection for clients because I am always on the hunt for like the new greatest place to go. Um, also love sales kickoffs. I love road shows. I love incentives. I love whatever I can get my hands on and brand. Yeah. And I think that's like how we differentiate ourselves from other, other companies, other planners. I'm not a super fan of trade shows. I'll be honest. They yeah. just not my jam. I mean, I do them, but I like to do the other things that go along with those trade shows. Um, you know, could be the party and it's like, how can we brand the heck out of it? And I know that's what we're talking about today. Um, but that's kind of, I mean, that's like where my passion lies. So doing you know, just lots of site selection for clients right now, because, you know, now that um, the floodgates have completely opened and everyone wants to meet. Um, so doing a bunch, doing a bunch of that. And then also like incentives. And I just, I really like that high touch mm -hmm. and just really having the attendees experience wherever they're going. Yeah. So even if it's a conference, like how can we incorporate the destination into 
the conference. So it's not just, you know, like, okay, here's, you know, here's all your AV production, like, you know, really like talking about what the goals are of the client, but then incorporating in what, like just the destination. And like you and I did that when, you know, back in, um, when you were at Talia yep. and incorporating San Francisco into it. And, and I think that is, that's something that is so important. And I think that's a miss by a lot of, a lot of planners. Yep. And that's the thing too, that is going to lead <clears throat> Impact, right. So those are the yeah. things that are going to make it memorable that leave that lasting impression in your attendees eyes. So yeah, let's, let's get into event branding. We're going to focus on that on today's podcast. Um, so let's kind of start at the beginning. How would you, when you're kind of just getting started with a client, say it's a new event, um, that they've never done before or mm -hmm. an event that they've done before, but maybe they've never had an outside planner on it and they're kind of bringing you in really take it to the next level. How do you start the process of event branding? So I will, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you two examples. So one was an incentive that we were planning. Um, and this is an incentive that we have planned. Um, we're going on our fourth year of doing it. So especially like whenever I have events that are repeat clients, we're doing this event over and over and over again. We do, it, it's not a rinse and repeat. It's absolutely not. Like it has to be unique to that specific destination. So for incentives, obviously like you're looking at the destination really to drive what your look and feel and brand is gonna be all about. But even from like the collateral pieces that we have, it's like, well, I don't wanna do the same thing that I did last year because I want them to be surprised and delighted when they open up their box of goodies and it's like oh my gosh and get them all excited um so we look at the destination that we're going to so last year we went to the bahamas for this one bahamas like what what does that invoke in you it invokes so much color and just vibrancy and fun and excitement so we're looking at at different cultural things that happen there. So Junkanoo, Junkanoo is like one of the big ones. It's like very, very cultural. So how can we incorporate that into the branding and the colors? Mm -hmm. And when we're on site at the property, we look at that as well because we don't want what we're bringing in to look out of place. Yes. We want it to feel like it was meant to be there. Um, when we did, uh, we just did an incentive a couple weeks ago to the Big Island of Hawaii. Well, what's the Big Island of Hawaii? It's just, it's very natural. It's very, you know, there's a lot of browns and obviously woods, there's some greenery, there's a volcano that's there. So bringing in that Hawaiian culture and just old time Hawaii and invoking that into the brand. So when we were looking at it, we were looking at like 1950s kind of like uh, Duke Kahanamoku longboard surfboards, bringing in like the Makahiki games, which were the, um, which is like the Hawaiian Olympics. So bringing that kind of stuff in. Yep. When we're looking at sales conferences, obviously we want to know destination. Um, we want to know what the goals are of the program. Typically those, if, and even if it's, a, if it's a user conference, this goes with that as well. We, um, we look at the carpet. <laughs> yes. You taught me this. Yes. In the day. Yeah. And yeah. We incorporate that. So there's kind of two ways to go about it, right? You can, you, before you do collection if you if there's say a corporate brand that you need to stick to their color palette or like you right. know a little offshoot of it you're you're thinking about that in the site selection process when you're doing yes. sites looking at the carpet and saying hey is this going to work with the corporate branding even if the event has its own brand that's maybe like a sister right. brand to the corporate brand we got to make sure it's going to fit here um, or if the client's okay with going really far away from the corporate brand, then you know when you go that you can really just make a whole new palette that is totally going to go with that space or whatever. But you really have to have those conversations beforehand. Right, exactly. And so, you know, we look at, we're looking at the carpet, we're looking at the walls, 
we are looking at like i'm looking at okay what is on the walls i mean one of my first questions that i ask it's like can i take that down can i cover it can i can i cling this can i cling that so yeah. when we're doing those site visits we are having those conversations right then and there because we know that it's going you know that they're going to want a brand you know i'm looking at the lighting and we did this actually for you in um for talia uh, I'm like, okay, this is, the, this is our vision of what we're wanting to do. Can we cover these lights? You know, mm -hmm. how can we do this? Like, can we bring our AV people in and can we, you know, can we put sleeves over the fluorescent bulbs? So yeah. thinking mm -hmm. outside the box yep. mm -hmm. is what's, you know, what's going to be important. Can we move furniture? Can we take this old furniture out and can we bring new furniture in? So it's really important when you are, when you're talking about brand, it's not just, it's not just a sign. It's not just a, you know, a 20, you know, 24 by 36 sign that's on an easel. Like yeah. those are just, oh, I mean, they make my skin crawl. So <laughs> how can we make it different? But yeah, if, if you have, if you were able to, from the beginning, make sure that there's enough budget to cover that level of branding, then mm -hmm never do just the easel on the sign, you know, you gotta, right. Anytime right. You can be more embedded with the existing architecture, the existing, you know, space, it's going to look so much cleaner and so much more thoughtful. So yeah, there's so many things I want to pick up on that. I'm like literally taking notes right now. Cause I don't want to forget about it, but you, <laughs> <laughs> you talked about so many different ways to incorporate the event branding. Cause like you said, like you were sort of alluding to with the easel on a sign, a lot of us just kind of defer to the signage as event branding, but there were so many other things in there that you said that I just want to repeat and make sure that the whole audience heard. You talked about the color palette being inspired by the destination or mm -hmm. I mean, like we were talking about, maybe it's the corporate branding and, and they're kind of coming together. So that's color palette that gets extrapolated onto all different kinds of things. So sign right. it um you know the swag colors that you choose all of these things are the color palette is a great starting place to then kind of extrapolate across everything else the other thing right. you said too was experiential so experiential activities as part of your event can actually play into the branding so you were mentioning like the the hawaiian games that you mentioned i forget mm -hmm. makahiki Right. So that, that is an activity, but it actually is playing into the brand of the event, right? So right. don't think it's just visual that is event branding. It's actually some of the experiences that can tie into that event branding as well. So right. kind of visual aesthetics, but also, you know, what else can you do um, throughout the event to just hone in on that? And then the other thing that I want to point out that is, I think, super important to remember is you said at the beginning, you were always thinking about the goal. So we're not just, and, and going back to the incentive example, exactly, or yeah, the, uh, the incentive example, <laughs> actually. So you, with that client, you said it's been four years, you're choosing a different destination every year, and you want it to be, you don't want it to be rinse and repeat. They don't want it to be rinse and repeat. Right. The reason they don't want it to be rinse and repeat is because their goal of that event is to get their salespeople to perform throughout the year and either hit quota or go over it, however they evaluate it. But in order to actually make that program an incentive, actually incentivize people to want to hit their quota so that they can go, it's got to be just like a totally new, exciting experience. Right incentivize them to get the goal that they want for the business right right and on top of that there are people that are their repeat attendees yeah. so we don't want it to be the same so all the new people obviously it's going to be a brand new experience but the people that come back each year because this last one that we did there's people that have been there for three years and you know all of them all of the experiences from you know, the swag that we're giving them to the group activity, to the final night dinner, it's, it's been completely different. It was, so typically we have done Maui gyms for them. One year, uh, actually the year that we went to the Bahamas, we didn't, last year we didn't do it just because of duties and taxes. 
And that's the other thing that you have to think about if you're doing international, what does this mean branding and bringing stuff in? Mm. Because in the Bahamas, if you're bringing in a luxury good, which is like a sunglasses, then they're charging you the full price. Your duties and taxes, the full price of the item. So if your glasses are $150, you're paying $150 to bring them in. So that's $300 for glasses. Mm, doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So you have to know what that is. If you're doing a program in London, let's think about like, are you actually going to have your stuff produced? in the United States. So a lot of times if we're doing international programs, we like to buy in that, in that country. Um, but for the glasses, we were doing the United States. So for this year, they were used to it like in previous years. And they're like, um, <laughs> like, um, we're like, oh, we don't know. Cause we totally changed it. We changed the whole format. So yeah. we were just, we just thoroughly confused. Yeah, Carol was just kind of like tapping her glasses. She's wearing glasses. Yeah, yeah. Hey, where are my glasses at? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. The others we did this one thing that was uh, that was really fun, and we've done bands for two events. We did a band, and this, and we did a marching band. So Bahamas, we did the Bohemian marching band. It was the Bohemian Police marching band, which is very. Um, very well known in the Bahamas. We did that for the incentive and uh, bringing in the culture. Then um, for another event, we did a marching band. Actually, I think you were at that one. This is when we first met with you being a client. Well, we had all of the marching band. It, they were the Blue Devils, which was like hugely popular. Um, and we had them all wearing branded t-shirts. So they were on brand in the colors that, because that was, that was at the Marriott Marquis in San Francisco. And you know, they have very colorful carpet. <laughs> uh, so we had to incorporate. So what we did with the branding is we in color, we incorporated literally all of the colors. Yeah. Because when we're doing branding, I, I had mentioned this before, like we really want it to feel like it was meant to be there. Yeah. Everything was like, you're just, and we like to own it too. So when we're looking at, when we're looking at hotels, we're trying to be really, really thoughtful and really specific on what hotels we're coming to because we like to own it. Yeah. So it wouldn't make sense for a 200 person event to go into a hotel that has like a hundred thousand square feet of meeting space. Yeah. Cause I'll just get lost. That is such a great point. And I don't think that anyone would typically think about thinking about that when you're thinking about event branding, that it's actually, you know, you're, that's another part of the site selection process that mm -hmm. you're thinking about that. Are they going to be the only group in house? Or are they going to at least be the main group in house and be able to take over sort of like the primary, you know, branding opportunities um, and making sure that you get that in the contract too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hotels are definitely getting more keen on the fact that like just because a lot of tech wants to brand and create those experiences. And so they are getting a little bit more keen on like, oh, you want to brand that? We're going to charge you for it. So yeah. any way that you can, you know, negotiate that ahead of time or even ask for their branding guidelines so you can see what the costs are and then you're just being really strategic about where you're going to brand things because you can brand with furniture, you can brand with pillows, you can, you know, bring in high boys and you can cling the top. That's not going to cost you anything except for the cling and the furniture rental. So branding with color, because I personally don't like have, I don't like having logos just everywhere because mm. I don't think you need it. Yes. You know, it's you want them to walk in and know, Yes. Like you're it. This is your spot. This is where you're supposed to be. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's kind of talk about that a little bit in terms of what, how you go through that process with clients of advising them, you know, some people just want to like, I hate to say it, but just like, it's like throw up of their logo everywhere versus right. get it that you don't have to do that. And you can be a lot more subtle about it and it'll look a lot cleaner. So how do you kind of like help people through that process? 
So I, what I like to do is from the moment they walk in the door, I want them to know that they're in the right place. So I like to brand entrances to, um, if I can, entrances to venues, hotels. Um, typically they have different branding opportunities, but I want them, especially if you have, um, if you have people that are local that are coming, I want them to know that, yes, I'm in the right spot because how many times have we gone there and been like, eh, where am I supposed to go? Right. So I want them to know that. Then when they get into the space, there is, you know, dependent on what the important factor is. Like, let's say if it's, you know, a whole sponsor area, that's going to be like, you know, hugely hit, like, okay, how can we brand that? So you're going to brand in like big chunks. And then what, then what you're going to do is you're going to basically like layer in furniture. You're going to layer in um, like some testimonials, that kind of thing. So whatever the whatever the message is that they are trying to get across, like that's that's how we're gonna brand. But we will not brand with, I, I will tell them point blank, like that is not a good idea. Like you can do it subliminally and they're gonna know what it is. They don't need, they know where they are. They know that they're at ABC event. As long as you've created that visual system ahead of time as well. So yeah, it's when people step into the event, it also needs to, you know, when you create a cohesive look and feel for the whole brand, that's going to also match your registration page. It's also going to match right. Miller ahead of time, right? So let's talk about the other ways that we can maybe, you know, incorporate event branding, not just on site at the event. Yeah. I mean, you know, it should be with, it should be with everything. I personally feel like you're, and this is the part that, that I think companies get stuck in. So they do a registration site because obviously they need to get like, they have the early bird, they have all of these things. So that needs to be done like ahead of time. The branding piece of it always and always tends to happen a little bit after that. So what I encourage them to do is like, okay, you need to create your website, create your website with, you know, you obviously have your name, all of that um, of the event but then have the splash page that's going to be more on brand because your registration is your registration and you can keep that a little bit more corporate, but that splash page, when you have, when you start incorporating speakers and all of that, have that be your branding because that doesn't need to be attached to the registration. Yeah. So that's kind of assuming that maybe they're using like a C event or a reg box right. or for the registration and then maybe right. the WordPress or something like that, or even like Splash, um, like Splash mm -hmm. um, and branding out uh, an actual like splashy page. Ideally, obviously, like I'll, I know a lot of our clients like to have it all in one, but you're so right. right. It does allow them to get the registration launched sooner so that they can start capturing those registrations if they're okay with just doing the registration at first. Another way we've seen that done is just using a save the date page. As yeah as the, at least the first announcement to start capturing some emails, um, as you're building out the full on registration page and splash page, like all in one, if you do need to have it all in one for some reason, or if, you know, your CMO is like, no, yeah, one page. Uh, right. but yeah, so there's some options there. Um, but yeah, and then that's the, that's the opportunity to really introduce the event brand to your audience. Right. So mm -hmm. I have a question actually, for the clients that you're working with, how often do you see them sort of straying away from their corporate brand versus, uh, and like making a whole new event brand versus like making it a really clear sister brand in how it looks? They, um, so all of our clients, they will have like their corporate identity. So their corporate logo, but all of the brands have been, they, they will create an identity specifically for the event. Yeah. And then, um, and then what they'll do is, so they have their corporate brand, they have their, they have their brand identity that they've created for the event, but then that's just a logo. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is driven by the, by the location of where it is or their theme. 
Another theme. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about theme actually. How often are you involved in the process of coming up with a theme for the event? Because I feel like for us, it's kind of like 50 50. Sometimes the client comes to us and they say, we already have a theme. Sometimes they come to us and say, I have no idea how to do this. Can you like come up with some themes for us? And we're not really a creative agency, like we're an event right. agency, but we can do it. Um, but we kind of just end up, you know, going with whatever our clients need. So I would say that it's, I would say that it's probably like a 50, 52, or they're coming up with like, they're trying to come up with a tagline. And so we will, I will like brainstorm with them. And a lot of it is stemming from their goals. And it's like, okay, we're, because when they're doing this, this event, they have plans for doing the event year over year over year. Yeah. So it's like, what are your, like, it's very short term. It would be a very short term goal for them just to think about this event. It's like they need to think about the next one and the next one and the next one. And a lot of that they're when they're doing that, they're thinking of just the trajectory of the company and where their product offerings are going to go. And I'm talking obviously like tech stuff, um, like software companies. So, you know, if their vision is like, OK, this year, this is like we plan to be at point A, then next year we're going to be further down and kind of our, our mission, like they have that overall mission, but it's going to take steps to get to the mission. So yeah. then we'll look at it like, okay, how can this, how can this brand evolve and still capturing the capturing the mission of what their, their company is. So yeah. we brainstorm with them, help them with identity. I mean, I think one of, I mean, I know one of like the, like, oh, what's, it's not secret sauce. It's a skill set that I have is I, I am able to take what the client wants and distill it down into a way that a designer is going to understand mm -hmm. because designer is very pie in the sky. They're very oh my gosh, let's go and look at, you know, like we can do this and this and this. And I can bring it back down to like, that's great, but that's also gonna like potentially cost a whole lot of money. So let's take it back. And, but then also explain to the client what they're talking about and then explain to the, to the designer. It's like, okay, this is what they need. This is what he is saying. So yep. they get it and they understand it. Yes. And I think that is something that makes, you know, a really, if you have that skill of being able to be that middle person between the client and the designer, and let's just specify when we say designer, we're saying like a graphic design slash creative right. agency. Yeah. So individual, sometimes it's an agency, sometimes it's their in-house person. Most of the time what we're the types of events you and I are working on, they, they either have an agency in place or we're helping them bring in an agency. So being that person in the middle who can really help translate for them. And also it's our job to make sure that the event stays on budget. So, you know, if the, and be the buffer, yeah, be the buffer and, yeah. and yeah, the client can be really honest with us if they're not happy with something or, you know, mm -hmm. they give it to us straight. And then we can kind of package that up nicely and bring it to the designer. The designer can also be really honest with us if they don't like the direction of the feedback. Um, and so we kind of just are that, that person making sure that everything's moving forward and in, in the right direction. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. I would be curious to know if anyone that's listening to the podcast or anyone that's, um, watching the live stream right now, if anyone offers creative services as part of their event agency, I don't see it done a whole lot um, because I do see it as different skill sets. And I actually do see the value of being that like middle person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, and it's, it's interesting because you can have the most amazing designer, like graphic designer, but they don't have a clue how to design like event branding yes. because they're like, okay, here's all your stuff. And it all looks the same. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like it can't be all the same. We have to have like, what's the hero image? What's that main, that main thing. And then you need all of these other things like layered on top of it, because obviously you don't want the same thing, like splattered everywhere. Totally. So it's, yeah, it gets, it gets tricky. 
Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to have a design agency on at some point to talk about what it takes to be really good at event graphic design. And I, I yeah. have event design because like technically we're event designers in that we are designing the whole experience, but you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Creative production company. Um, right. Well, right. And you know, when we're walking around hotels doing the site visits and I'm seeing like ugly art to, you know, like I got to cover that. How can I cover that? Yeah. And so being able to tell the designer, it's like, okay, we need you like we want to cover this this and this and this is what it's going to say like great place for testimonials covering art um you know and you can repurpose it too because if you cover it then you can also take it back to your office and then it can be artwork in your office as well um but just being able to you know you see pillars you know pillars are kind of like an event planner's worst nightmare and like, how can I cover those? Or how can I incorporate my event design into an event brand into those pillars? Yeah. So really looking at, you're looking at everything yeah. from doorways to, you know, cause you can, you can brand doorways. I mean, you can brand everything. You can brand everything. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. And yeah, it is always, I, I will also add, it's really nice if you can have, if you do know who the agency is going to be doing the graphic design from the start, if you can have them there at the site visits from the beginning. Yes. It's so helpful. They will see things in a different way too. And they do tend to be a little bit more pie in the sky. And maybe that where the event planners kind of like, you know, bringing everyone down to so like, oh, that's going to be so expensive and we got to stay in budget, but it's mm -hmm. good. It's good to have both of those personalities there so that you are someone is there just free to imagine the like absolute highest level of what is possible in the space not that we don't right. do, you know what i mean um, yeah it's really helpful to have that whole crew there if you can so yeah cool okay we have gone through like we're at time somehow already we're gonna have to have you back on the show yes uh, again soon and we can continue this conversation um but so many nuggets thank you so much for sharing everything that you did um if you have more questions for me or carol carol is in the event agency secrets community so you can always reach out to us in there um but is there any other way that you want to sort of like let everyone know how they can get in touch with you carol um i'm on instagram at roar events um i also have an e-course to help planners like learn how to do all of the event stuff that I do. And um, that's, uh, I just create an Instagram account on that. That's uh, Roar Playbook. So yeah, and I'm an open book. So if you guys have any questions, just reach out and I am happy to answer whatever I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carol. Really appreciate your time. Always fun chatting. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in.